one. Hey everybody, Arturo Johnson here, and boy do we have a dandy for you. Welcome to the Rainmaker Podcast, and today we have Nate Offert on, and he's going to be um, talking about how he helps agents to grow their business. You guys want to stay tuned. Nate, man, it's, it's definitely great to have you on the show. Welcome, man. Yeah, wherever that was, I want to go. <laughs> yeah, that's Naples, Florida. But yeah, man, so um, I get a, 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 a FaceTime from Cody, which I think is very hilarious, right? And he's like, yeah, man, so um, I'm doing this. You know, he got this great idea. He asked me a couple questions. And uh, he's like, hey, have you ever met Nate Offer? You ever heard of him? He's got this cool thing. You should. He's doing this event. You should go to it. And he's like, hang on a second. And then next thing I know, the three of us are uh, on FaceTime, hadn't met you. No, 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 time out. Next thing you know, he triple dials me like I'm a lead, right? So he FaceTimes me, I hit the client. FaceTime me, I hit the client. I said, I'm on a Zoom. He goes, you better, you you need to answer, trust me. And I'm like, so you like hang up my Zoom. I'm like, all right, listen, it's a new agent. I'm like, I gotta call you back and get on the phone with Cody. And there you are. He's like, you ever meet him? I'm like, no, <laughs> Cody's funny. It's yeah. awesome though. So I'm in, my, I'm in my backyard and, uh, Nate, myself, and Cody are on there having a conversation. And so he's like, hey, man, Cody, uh, it's great to chat with you, but I need to get back to my Zoom. About 15 minutes later after we uh, hijacked him from his call, set up a call with Nate. And, man, I was like, I have to have you on the podcast as a rainmaker because you are so polarizing and interesting. So I wanted to have you on to kind of share um, not only what you're doing now, but your backstory was incredible to hear. Um, a lot of the things you've done and just somebody that is a, a, a outside the box thinker that I like innovating in the life insurance space. So I wanted to interview you. So let's just take it back. Let's start from the beginning. You know, where did your entrepreneurial journey begin and when did you realize that, you know, you were different and you just want you didn't want to go the traditional route? Right. So back when I was two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we can do that, or we can say, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I love when speakers are that. Like, no one cares, right? But if you're you're asking, and I grew up in a home like a lot of people did, where money was an issue, right? It, 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 everything, every decision we made was based on on money, Arturo. It was like we had to read from the right side of the menu instead of the left. You know, could we afford it? What would you buy? Our trips to, you know, the the uh, the, the ocean or the shore, Jersey Shore. Uh, we were lucky we stopped at McDonald's. So growing up, I always heard money isn't everything, or money doesn't buy happiness. Like a lot of people heard that. Or money doesn't grow on trees. I love that one, right? So yeah. I grew up all the entire time. I'm like, I want to experience. I like money doesn't make happiness. So I, I want to give it a try. You know what I'm saying? So I was very entrepreneurish, I guess when you call it, I don't know. I, I worked when I was 13, scrubbing fish tanks, you know, and then when we got a job uh, mowing yards. And I was always working, I always wanting to make money because we never had any money, right? So um, you know, when I got out of school, I went to college like I was told to do it. I didn't make it. You know, I dropped out twice. Um it's a whole other long story. And a friend of mine drug me down to this meeting, right? He's like, oh, man, you got to see this company. There's a bunch of young guys are making tons of money. You got to check this thing out, right? Little did I know it was a network marketing company. And he drags me in this room and I'm sitting in this room and they got water filtration, air filtration. Uh, you know, uh, back then I smoked, you know, and I was I just want to have a cigarette. I want to sit here, sit here and listen to all these products and stuff. And they strategically placed me like in the middle where I couldn't get out. Right. So I was stuck there the whole time. And I was completely just like, I cannot wait for this to end. And all of a sudden they roll this TV in and it's got a VCR and it's got a, a you know TV and they start playing all these testimonials of people who were, you know, bro broke bartenders who are making millions of dollars and, you know, preschool teachers making $3 and 45 cents an hour now driving a Mercedes and pot and pan door door sale. And it kind of caught my attention a little bit because I was like, what is going on? And, and if you hear my dog going, it's because the UPS guy came. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so it caught my attention because I'm like, oh man, what is, what is it that they know that I don't know? Right. And this guy gets on on the video and he's got, you know, he's standing in front of a half million dollar car, right? His arms are crossed and folded. And he's, I'll never forget it because he's like, where will you be in the next five years if you keep doing what you've been doing? How many people do you know in your life who achieved wealth? Mm. More importantly, how many people do you know in your life that achieve wealth that are willing to teach you on how to do it? He's like, think about it for a minute. How many people do you know trying to get wealthy? And in my life at that time, of time, I knew no one trying to get wealthy. I knew everyone trying to scrape by. They had more month left at the end of their money. And so, like, he said, where will you be if you keep doing what they do or what you're doing? And where mm. could you be 
you follow somebody who built the track to follow. He took other people down that track. They wound up immensely successful. Where could you be if you just did what they did? And when that overview was over, I signed up. Mm. I was excited, right? And and I, I bought products and I maxed out a credit card because I said, hey, you can't have McDonald's without buying products. And I went to a training and then my sponsor quit. So here I was kind of left alone. And I mean, there's there's people making millions of dollars, people making 30, 40. And this is back in the 90s, right? You know, that's, you know, I'm dating myself now. I'm almost 50 years old and I struggled. Right. I didn't have a great mentor. I didn't have great leadership, but like, I was like, I'm, I'm going to make it one man can do it. So can I, if a thousand men are doing it, what's my problem. Right. And so I, I went from living in one bedroom apartment, you know, people were pulling up in the office and they have a Mercedes and my car got repoed. I was at a point where I was staying with eight people on an air mattress in a one bedroom apartment, walking across the street, putting my one suit on trying to, cause I was like, like a job was like an STD, man. Like you can't have a job, man. You gotta, you gotta, you cannot have a job just over broke. You're a loser. Like that was so ingrained. And, and now I look back, think I probably should have had like a part-time income waiting table still instead of going broke and maxing out credit cards at a hundred thousand bucks, a uh, hundred thousand dollars in debt. So I was in the business for four years. I was a miserable failure. I could be the one that all your friends talk about who tried something like that and it didn't work. Um, and there was a contest. Like I know in the insurance industry, they run these like contests and stuff. So imagine you win a carrier trip and the person that won this contest was going to go out and talk and meet with my mentor at his home and they couldn't go. And I kind of won by accident. And so I got to go and I was so excited because again, I never had anyone in my life who had achieved financial freedom or wealth or even making two, $300,000 a year that I could ever have mentor me or, or coach me or train me or teach me or even got to hang around, right? None of my friends, family, relatives, you always say you hang around the people pretty much in the same circle as you are in your income. Right. And so we got a chance to go to his house and my name should have been Nat at that point instead of Nate because I followed around like a bug, man. I, I mean, think <laughs> about it. Here I am broke. Here's a guy making a million dollars a week, Arthur, a million a week, net, wow. net, after his expenses. After his $120 million Moonraker mega yacht, look it up. It's still the fastest in the world. After his two planes, after his 10 homes, after his chef and his pilot, mm. pilot and his, after everything and all the expenses, he was netting a million dollars a week. I think it was Garth Brooks when he was back really on tour was here. He, uh, my mentor was here. And then it was Siegfried and Roy when they were touring Vegas was here in terms of top money earners. I had a shot to meet this guy. Right. Mm. And so everyone else is all kind of like, scared and nervous and i was scared and nervous but i'm like here's my shot so i'd sit down and go what about this what about that what about this what about that what about this what? and he'd answer my questions he'd stand up walk away and i'd walk over to the pool table I'm like so after an overview is done and someone goes i want to think about it. what do you say right and how do i do this and what's the proper way to build a group and, da -da. and i kept going on and on right and so he entertained me for a while and then he kind of vanished away so i couldn't keep finding him and the next day we're in the corporate office and we walk in right this <laughs> is so embarrassing he never forgets this still we walk in, I got a pair of flip-flops on because I forgot my shoes and my suit because back then we suited up. And he looks at me and that look, I'm, you cannot, you can never meet him. It's kind of like, nice shoes, dude. And I felt like this, <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, you know, here's my chance to impress this guy and walk in with flip-flops with my suit. I mean, how dumb did I look? And we sat down. He goes, I hope everyone had a great time uh, the last two days. Does anyone else have any questions besides Nate? <laughs> and I went... And I, I mustered up all I could after the after everyone was leaving. I walked up and I said, sir, is there any way I can have your pager number? Because back then, that's what we had pagers, right? They just right. kind of came out back then. And he's like, you're not going to light me up like you did all weekend, are you? I said, no, sir. I just want to be able to have your pager number. I want to be, you know, I, I just would love to have your, your mentorship. Coach, I won't bug you, I promise. He goes, let me ask you a question, Nate. How long have you been doing this business for? I go, four years, okay? He's like, what the most amount of sales you ever did in a month? And it was like 17,000 with me and my team. And he goes, how much money is the most money you made in this uh, in, the, in the company so far? I said, $3,000. It's so, okay. You go out and do $25,000 next month. I'll give you my pager number. And he walks out of the room. And I'm like, no, I need your pager number. I don't know how to do 20, right? And it was the first lesson I learned, which most people take a long time to learn is I had all the tools necessary to do 25, because guess how much I did the next month? I did thirty-two thousand dollars in sales. Wow. I had all the tools, the talent, and the skill to do thirty-two thousand. A, I didn't believe I could, but B, here's this huge. I didn't have something big enough to lose. People talk about a why. I'm kind of with Coach Bird on this. Like, you know, I'm doing it for my kids. Really, why are you still broke? <laughs> exactly. If you're a motivator, you're be broke. I'm doing it for money. You know, money's not a motivator. 
What motivates us is fear of loss. We have something and we're afraid of losing it. And that motivates people like, well, I don't have money for leads or I don't know how to write 10,000. Well, take the most important person in your life. They get kidnapped. You look on Instagram and there's a picture with a black hood and someone has a gun to their head and it's no fake. And they go, you have two days to write $10,000 insurance premium or this gun goes off in this person's head. Now it sounds drastic. Everyone would do it, Arturo. Everyone would. There would be no, yep. well, I don't know script or I'm nervous or I don't know how to get leads. You would talk to everybody, anybody. You'd be calling everybody. You wouldn't hang. If someone said no, great, next, and you pick up the phone. So it was the first lesson I learned that, Nate, you had the ability. Now you have to learn stuff. Obviously, most of us have the ability to do whatever it is that we need to do if we have something big enough to lose. So I constantly, as funny as it sounds, I play that game with myself. I'm self-employed. I was a horrible employer of myself. My mentor said, imagine when you wake up in the morning and I, I'm there, obviously not when you shower, but I'm there right in the morning and I'm following you all day long, watching what you're doing. Would I be happy? Would I be pleased? Would I say you're doing the necessary things to be the most productive every moment of the entire day? And I had to play that game with myself because I'm lazy, right? And so when I met my mentor in 90 days, Arturo, same company, same product, same no car, same air mattress, Nothing changed except he mentored me. I went from making three grand a month to 20 grand a month. And in a year and a half, I was a millionaire. Wow. Same product, same company, same everything. Now, I learned a lot of things along the way. But one of the things I really, really learned from him um, was being able to play that game. Like I sit down and do a dials, right? And and I back then we drive around in people's homes. I know I'm jumping around the story, but when I got involved in insurance and I would say, okay, Friday night's our night with my family and my boy. We want to go eat. He loved to go out and eat. He likes to go out and eat, right? So I told myself, if I don't have a certain number of appointments, I don't go out to eat. Now, people may say, that's stupid. Why would you do that? You're making 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month. I was a top producer in the agency my first year. We went from 1 million to 2 million because I know I wouldn't make the dials if I didn't give myself something that I needed to have and put myself in a situation where I could lose it. So now my, my wife was on the hook. My son was on the hook. I didn't want to look into his eyes when he's eight years old going, why are we going out to uh, Dave and Buster's tonight? No, son, I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And I still to this day play those games with myself. I, I, <laughs> I brought a new agent on and I said, I'm going to help him. I didn't tell him this, but I told myself, I'm going to help him create an agency that does $100,000 in annual premium volume in his first month, first full-time month. So I talked to the people he knows, talked to his more market. And I told, wrote down, if I don't do a hundred thousand dollars, I'm going to sell my Bentley. Mm. And I love that car. <laughs> I love that car. You know what it made me do? It made me get my ass out of bed when I didn't want to get out of bed. Cause I, you make 80 grand a month, hundred grand a month. I mean, your, your lifestyle doesn't really change that much. You know, it's just like, you get to a certain point, you bought all the stuff you thought to make you happy. It made you happy, but then buy fulfillment, you know, supercar, sit in the car and collect dust, you know, and, and it's just like a kid at Christmas. You open your toys and you, you're bored of them three, four months later. It's no different yeah. when you get older. The toys are more expensive. It's the same deal. Yeah. So I have to play these games with myself in order to create, to go at a higher level. So I'm constantly putting myself in situations where fear of loss, because I know fear of loss motivates people. Why do you think people go to work every day? They're afraid of losing their job. They don't like it. They drive through <laughs> traffic. They know if they don't show up, they can get a minus this or a whatever pink slip. I don't know if they do. I don't have a, never had a job, so I'm not sure what they do. But they're scared to death to lose their job. So, so they go true. to work. Every day. So that's a little bit of the backstory. And then um, I uh, made millions of dollars in network marketing. I got out of the industry. I took those skills. Um, I bounced around from one company to another. It was just, it was really tough. Great company, great business. I think everybody, I really do. I think everyone should go through three or four years of some type of network marketing company because it, it creates you, it, it teaches you to be resilient. It teaches you to get no's. It teaches you to, um, uh, to have grit. It teaches you to have discipline. It teaches you how to alternatively finance things, <laughs> creative financing, as they call it. Um, it, it just, if you ever know anyone who's in network marketing, a lot of them are really leadership training based. And so I was, I went to hundreds of trainings and I took the skills my mentor taught me. I mean, the first training I showed up to, he had three, 13,000 people at the MGM Grand Theater who all paid three grand to hear him talk for two and a half days. I mean, wow. it was amazing. I mean, like I, I was in awe. I was like, I was, he'd go to two, three in the morning. Right. And I was just like, man, this guy is, is, is the amount of knowledge he had, his mentors that he had, but how he was able to present and put on an event to hold your attention and be able to implant things in your subconscious mind. You didn't forget was nothing short of amazing. Um, so I took those skills and I got involved in a credit card processing company and Bill, I think it was, I don't know, we went, grew it to like a hundred million dollar company. Um, I was making great money, you know, I, I, 
40, 50, 60 grand a month, right? And I was kind of promised some ownership with it. Things kind of fell through. I gotta be careful how I talk about this. Anyway, long story short, I walked away. Um, and that was when I was 38 years old, right before I asked my wife to marry me. Um, and she thought I was crazy. And I just said, babe, I just built my bachelor home. I had my nice Bentley I just bought. I had my other nice car. I said, they could take my stuff. You know, I never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul, Arturo. Never, right? They could take my stuff, but they ain't going to take what's in here and what's here. They can't take that. And re- honestly, my mentor told me, you're not going to want that stuff anyway. Who cares? You really want your t- car that's 10 years old? No, every three, four years, you're changing your car. He's like, you go out there and buy bigger, better stuff. And I, I'm glad he taught me that lesson because all the things that, were materialistic that I like and the Rolexes and all that kind of stuff. Some people like it, some people don't. It's, it's, uh, it's our trophies, you know, they're trophies. I don't think you guys are still hanging on to your trope. Maybe some of you are, you know, your T-ball <laughs> trophy when you were five and you got it like polished up like next to the mantle on the fireplace. That'd be silly. So Uncle all that Rico t- is what we call them. Uh, Uncle Rico's. <laughs> Uncle Rico's. Uh, as I say that with the trophies behind my back, they're recent. Okay. They go in the, they get recycled on only because people come over and they want to see that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, so I, I walked away from that and to bring it up to speed, I talked, um, I was involved in another business. I was trying to, to uh, get going in the ground. We were making decent money, but not the money I was used to making. So I was kind of leveraging all my savings. I was pretty much out of my savings, um, sold some stuff that I own. And I called up, Matt and Brad Smith, um, because I knew them from before and, and, and they were just two incredible twin brothers. They laugh alike, look alike, talk alike. I mean, they're amazing people. Um, they had this mattress company that they were selling millions of dollars of, across the, the, the globe, I think it was. And then 2008 hit and it crashed and they couldn't bankrupt their business, Arturo, because everything was attached to their parents' credit. So they were desperately looking for how to survive and they came across the insurance business. Some truck driver, Brad new, introduced him, said, man, this is something you can do. So they went out and that was back when we we're driving around to people's homes. They went out, Matt sold, made about 10 grand his first month part-time and Brad made about seven. And so I'm calling up trying to recruit him because you should look at what we're doing. I said, what are you doing? He's like, we're selling mortgage protection. I go, what's that? He goes, it's like life insurance policy. And I started laughing. I went, <laughs> Oh my God, dude. I go, is life that bad? That's what I said to him. That's how dumb and ignorant I was. Is life that bad? And he goes, what do you mean? I said, you're selling insurance? I'm like, no, thanks. I'm not interested. But hey, I know how that works. It's like a network. It's like a pyramid deal. You get people and they bring people. It's just a really good one. You have to get licensed to do it, right? So it's legal and federally regulated, right? So I love the people. Is that a pyramid? I don't know. Is your church a pyramid? You have one pastor and how many people in the congregation? Yeah. And you have pastor, deacons, congreg. Every structure takes the form of a pyramid, but people that are ignorant say stupid stuff like that. So I said, I'll bring you some people, but I'm not doing it. So I sent out a video, the company video. I was always taught, use tools and events, talk to your sponsor, your upline, share your up the company story, your upline story, and take the focus off of you. Um, so I just told their story, what they did. I said, I don't know if you're having an interest or not, but hey, check out this video. If you do, I'll put you on the phone with Matt or Brad, toss them upline. It's very simple when you recruit or market that way. So I talked to 10 people and nine signed up. Wow. And they were excited. And so I said, Brad, how am I getting paid on this, brother? I'm not the Red Cross here. I got more than nine, I know. And he's like, well, it's kind of regulated. I go, I know it's regulated. What's that mean? Well, I really can't pay you off of their sales unless you're licensed. I'm like, oh, boy, God, here we go. I said, okay, how much is that going to cost? <laughs> like, well, it's a couple hundred bucks. You know, can you get course in line? So I spent four days, put everything aside. In the most miserable four days of my life, I was doing life as a coach. I wanted to punch Coach Jenny in the face. I just hate testing and all that stuff. Passed the test. I thought I was done. At this point in time, now I got 30 people in licensing. And I'm like, I'm still not going to do it, but I'm going to keep sending you people. You train and you work with them, pay me. That's good. It'll be a revenue source. So he started to agree to do that. And then like about a week in, he goes, hey, can you can you uh, do a conference call for your team? I really want you to do a call for your team. I said, what do you mean? Like do it. And we didn't have Zooms back then and we weren't really using them. I'm sure they had it, but we weren't using them. It's about 10 years ago. I go, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, all the stuff you learned from your mentor and all the skills that you have and how to build a team. I said, Brad, I'd never sold insurance, dude. He goes, it doesn't matter. All the success principles you're in. I go, it matters to me. I hate nothing more. My mentor always said, if you can't do it, teach it. If you can't teach it, write a book about it. That's he was making fun of people that do that, right? <laughs> so then there's people that write a book about something, then they go teach it. They've never done it, right? So I, I hate that. Like it, it, it drives me sour when I hear somebody speaking into you to teach you what you should do in your business and they never did it. 
Can I sell homes? Absolutely. But I'm not going to teach you how to sell home until I can go out there and kick ass and be number one realtor in, in the market. And I, how do I do that? I cheat and I find someone to will to teach me what they did who's number one. It's not magic. As soon as I learned that cheating was how you get to, uh, how you get hit to success, that was easy for me. I'm not saying cheating in a bad way. Find someone who has what you want. Do what they do. You'll get what they got. Yeah, Tony Robbins says the fastest way to find success is to find somebody that's doing exactly what you want to be doing and model them. It, it's it's marriage, spiritual, physical, financial, social. And you're not going to learn how to lose 10 pounds from someone who weighs 300. I mean, that's just common sense. But how many people listen to broke people? Oh, my, or even people that let, like, either they're not broke. If I'm looking at a business opportunity and I go to my uncle who's a doctor and he gives me advice, why would I listen to my uncle about the business over here just because he's a successful doctor? If I want to be a doctor, I'll listen to my uncle. Otherwise, he has no clue about this business. He has no idea about buying leads and turning them in and financial service. He never did it. He never did it. So, he, you know, where when, when, when I got involved and I started telling him I'm not going to do that, he goes, oh, man, he's like, why don't you just go buy? I said, Brad, I don't have a story. I don't want to train people to do something. He goes, why don't you just buy some leads and, and go do it for like a week unless you think you can't. <laughs> So he got me. I know what he was doing. He still got me. I said, of course I can do it, Brad. I said a week. I said, I'll give it one month. I'll do one month. I'll develop my story. I'll prove that I know how to do this. Then I can start teaching and coaching my team all, all the stuff that my mentor taught me because I can make it applicable to something I did. So I went out and bought leads and I was miserable on the phone. Like I bought these bonus leads and people think, oh, I was just a success. I called through 78 is 80 bonus leads. I only booked three appointments. I was awful um, because I talk fast. And I'm in Texas and it's low and slow when you're calling leads. I'd be like, hey, Ator, I'm just giving you a call, follow. I'm not interested. Click, click, click. So I called up my mentor and I said, hey, uh, no, Brad, I called Brad at the time. I said, can I buy more leads? And he started laughing. He goes, what do you mean? I said, is what happened to the 70, 80 that you have? I said, well, I went through them all. You got a hold of everybody? I said, yeah, I've been dialing for three freaking days, eight hours a day. I got a hold of everyone that I could get a hold of. There's a few people I'm going to do some drive bys by because back then we would drive around. I said, I need more people to talk to. And he goes, really? I said, Brad. I love you and Matt, but you're not that special. If you can go out and make 10 grand in one month or seven grand in one month, I just got to be, it's something I got to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Let me practice my script with you. And he immediately said, you talk too fast. You got to slow down. And I started getting that massive action, constant correction. I took that, booked six more appointments in the next two, three hours by slowing down when I was on the phone. And I went out my first week, I think we wrote um, 15,000 APV. That's like an average of $80 a month policy on mortgage protection, 15 grand my first week. Wow. And back then, that was impressive. I mean, people are doing that in a day now, but that, back then, driving around two hours in 100 degree weather from one appointment to another appointment, someone doesn't show up and you're in the Taco Bell parking lot. I and mean, it was impressive, I guess, for them. So he called, he goes, Man, you just took out the top guy. I said, What? Whoa, whoa, I didn't, what do you mean? What do you mean? He's like, Oh, well, they had this contest. They do it like November to remember. And they put you all in the brackets and they take the top number one person. And then I put you in as a wild card. You just took him out. He was the favorite to win. I'm like, Okay, I'm not really sure. Is that a bad thing? He's like, no, but you're what? It's like, how great would it be if you had your story your first month that you went out and won the biggest sales contest in the entire cup? Okay, what do I got to do? <laughs> so I wrote 50 grand my next, my first full time month. I wrote over $50,000 in annual premium volume, wow. 85,000 in six weeks, and, um, you know, made about, I don't know, $30,000, $40,000 deposit in my bank account. And so then I was hooked. <laughs> now I got 30 people coming out of licensing looking at me and I'm like, okay, this is the real deal. Like this is the network marketer's dream. Like I can actually have people that are not just consuming product to get paid. They're actually selling stuff and they actually have people to talk to and it's tangible and it's predictable. And if I can manage their activity, I can manage their success. And so like, then I got addicted to it and, and the rest is kind of history. Like I said, we did about a million, million APV our first year, 2 million our second. Four million or third, eight million the, the fourth year after that, um, and it's just been uh, it's been an exciting, fun ride uh, since then. Yeah, man. So let's talk about that. So what kind of goes into that kind of uh, exponential growth? What's the you know everybody's you know trying to do that, but people um, are falling short. So what's a couple key things that you need to get right in order to go from you know a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand to a million to two million to four million to to eight million? Yeah, well, now it's a different world. So back then it was tough because my conversation in the business I was in was, what county do you live in, Arturo? <laughs> Where are you from? Tennessee. What county? <laughs> oh, shoot. 
can't do that. We don't have any leads there. The data was out. So it was really hard to build. Even though we had that growth, it was very difficult to build the way I was taught to build, which is through leveraging your relationships, not trying to recruit your mom, dad, brother, sister to do this, but finding out who they know. Right. So by curating your relationships and finding out who they know is how I was taught to build. The challenge with that back then was I'd find people that were, you know, a lot of people that I recruited in the beginning, knew people in California and they, we weren't getting leads. So they were sitting around for six to eight weeks before leads were turned on. They quit by then. Right. So this world is different now. So what I had to do back then, I can talk a little bit about, but I I talk more about what you can do now in the virtual world. If you're doing life insurance, mortgage protection, I guess. Uh, a lot of people have done virtual through health and everything else. Now I can recruit anybody who can sell anywhere with a non-resident license. So the game has changed. The game has changed. I don't care what county. I can, I can build and recruit local to sell national now. I can have an office. There's no people like, we have an office. I'm like, what do I have an office for? Me and my buddy, one person that works here, we're going to sit in the office because all the other leads are being taken by other people. There was no reason to have an office. So it took me about two and a half years to build it up to about 230, 250,000 a month, basically 250 a month consistently. It took me two and a half years in the old model, as I call it. Mm -hmm. In the new model, we, I started a brand new base shop. We grew it from zero to 260,000 in 90 days. Wow. And that's not to say I'm impressed with anything else. It's just that's, there's no handcuffs. Right? Yeah. I, I taught two people who wrote over a hundred thousand dollars in APV their first month in the business on mortgage protection leads mm. two, two so far. I'm done doing it because I think I exhausted them for, for doing it, but I, there, there's a method and a plan to do it. But you know, if you can teach how to do a hundred thousand, do 20. So to answer your question, it's about, <laughs> boy, we can spend an hour on this. I'll, I'll try to make it simple. I chased money for so long, I went broke. And then what happened was my mentor, and we've heard this and you guys can read it in books. My mentor said, when you quit chasing money, money will start chasing you. And I said, well, how do I quit chasing it? He goes, quit focusing on you, Nate. It's always about you. You want to know when you can get your next promotion, how much your check's going to be this month. He goes, why don't you find two or three other people and make the focus about them and watch what happens to your business. And so anytime that I've gotten involved now with building an organization, my goal is how many stories can I develop? Because the amount of stories I can develop in my organization pertains to what value I can bring. Because everyone listens to the radio station, W-I-F-M. What's in it for me? W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? They don't care about my McLaren. They don't care about my million dollar house. They don't care about my $40,000. They don't care. What can you do for me? So right. if I can get a portfolio of people that I've helped and go, Hey, here's Marlon Faulkner. He came to me homeless, nowhere to live, separated from his wife and his four kids. Mm. He wasn't hitting the will work for food. I hit the top of the company in three years. I helped him hit it in four months after me. Now he's a seven figure money earner. Here's Gus Villagran. Boom. Story, 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 story. So if I'm recruiting and I have stories of people that I have able to help and I make that my focus, then I become far more attractive, right? So if I say, hey, listen, I met a kid, he's set 21 years old, had seven bucks in his pocket, was in the industry for six months, couldn't figure out what was going on. I got him started in the business. He sat his butt right there, right? Couldn't even afford a Chick-fil-A sandwich. I helped him write over $50,000 his first two weeks. He wrote over $100,000 his first month. And we built an agency that did over $100,000 his first full-time month outside of what he did. I'm looking for someone I can do the same thing with. Why should I, without sounding rude, what value do you bring to me that I should spend my time, energy, and effort working with you as opposed to the other three people I've talked to in the last two days? And now the role's reversed. I got the value. And they got to sell me why I should work with them and not in an arrogant way. Right. And so if people really got focused on, that's why people, oh, I don't want to recruit right away. Why? If you have that philosophy, you should be bringing people on and see how many people can you have, have help success, take the light bulb and, and the spotlight off of you and put it on them. And the more stories you do, that's the most valuable part is your people's stories. Because the more testimonials, the more stories of people I can have that I played a role in helping, the faster my team will grow. And the second key thing, if you want a lot of duplication, is hopefully you have a good mentor. Find your upline, a good upline. Toss people over your shoulder to them when you're new. I mean, if I brought you on and I said, okay, Arturo, there's two types of agents right now. First type of agent wants to go out, they want to learn a business, and they want to write, you know, make $75,000, dollars maybe even $250,000 a year on their own pen. Some people make a little bit more, but that's probably the range we're looking at. Another type of agent wants to learn the business, make seventy five, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars on their own pen, but also wants to start developing an agency where eventually he can make that same amount of money, whether he goes to work or not. Which type of agent are you? It's a leading number question. Two. Most people are going to say two. Great. So if you're number two, 
If we're going to start building a business together, it won't be a good time. Five years from now, five months from now, five weeks from now, five days from now, or five minutes from now? When do you think it will be a good time to start building? Five minutes from now. Actually, so right now. The, you got time right now? <laughs> absolutely. So let me tell you this. So the cool thing about this is, logically, it makes zero sense because you don't know what you're doing. Why in the world would you want to try to teach someone to play basketball if you never dribbled one? You want it, would you? So here's the thing is, I'm going to work for you. You got 90 days of my undivided attention. I want you to make a list of people that you know. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to share the opportunity with them. I'm going to find out who they know. I'm going to help you build a team. I'm going to help train them. You're going to watch me train your team so that when you get trained up and you, you, I need you to focus on in the home and on the phone, on the Zoom, in the phone, whatever you're going to call it, right? On the phone, in the home, like book appointments, get them to show up and protect families. It's all you need to focus on. And you're going to watch me on onboard people, teach people, you're all learning together. So now they're all learning together. And so most people that I see in any, any type of a business, they have their front level. That's all they work with. I work with people underneath them because if I work with them underneath them and get them success, this guy can't quit. He'll have to figure it out. Marlon was horrible. He'll tell you, he, he was not good. He had a 35% net place. He got kicked out of two carriers for God's sake. He rolled up a vector to me his first year. He let his insurance license expire while he was selling insurance. <laughs> So he was trapped though. He couldn't go anywhere because we had other people that were underneath him having success. So he gave him time to grow like we all need to do as a person um, and to, to do his personal growth, become a great leader. And now he's one of the most sought after speakers in, in, in our company. So it's like focus on helping those people. So I'm going to start working for you, Arturo. You bring him in and I'll talk and train him. Let's say we get five of your best people you know working for you. Where's your income be in the next six months? Where do you think it's going to be? Pretty so high. I'm going to carry, I'll carry half the bricks if you carry 50%. You tell me what kind of size house you want to build metaphorically, and I'll show you what you're going to need to do it. But if you tell me you want to build an 8,000 square foot house in the Hollywood Hills, don't show up with a pink plastic shovel your kid took to the beach last summer to bag a yard sand. It's not going to work. You know, so depending upon what you want to build, I'll show you what it's going to take, and then you can commit to it, and you can be held accountable for it, right? So here's the thing. <clears throat> If at any point in time, I feel like you're not carrying your, your load of the bricks, I'll carry 50, you carry 50. I got to have your permission to have a conversation, call you up as an adult and have an adult conversation without getting our feelings hurt, without our egos getting involved to address what's going on. Can I have your permission to do that? Yeah. Can I have your permission to do that? Okay. Guess yeah. what? The door swings both ways. I'm no one special. I just been doing this longer than you. If you ever feel like I'm not carrying my side of the bricks and I'm not carrying my way, I give you permission to call me up, call me out. Right. And say, hey, Nate, I don't feel like I'm getting the, what you promised, right? And we'll, we'll have an adult conversation. I won't get my ego in the way. I won't get my feelings hurt. Fair enough. Let's go. And so by setting that precedent, a lot of people go, how do you hold people accountable? Well, if you don't tell them you're going to be held accountable, how can you hold them accountable? And that's why that mentee-mentor relationship is like, like, why are you yelling at me? Why are you calling me out? I don't, I, 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 and it's get, defensiveness happens, right? Because they never had the conversation. Well, here's what I expect. Be on all the conference calls. So I just text someone today. I go, hey, Wes, do we need to have this conversation? He goes, what one? I said, the one we talked about. I should have said name. Wes, Wes, uh, Mark, Mike. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm talking about. Do we need to have this conversation? What do you mean? The one we talked about when we first got started because I haven't seen you in the last two or three conference calls. So now I have a reference point. And if I call you up and we have the conversation, I'll say, okay, I'm not sure what's going on. I don't need to have a long ordeal or book report. If you want to tell me some stuff, you can. But here's, here's our choices. We got to lower your goals and your expectations because what you're doing right now is not going to achieve what you said you wanted to build. And that's okay. A lot of people adjust their goals. You may say, I want to build 8,000 square foot house and you realize it's way too much work. It's okay. Second thing we got to do is this just isn't really for you. And you need to go find something else to do. It's just like, you don't, your heart's not in it. You don't love it. You don't say, you know, and what's I funny though. I, I, uh, most uplines are afraid to say that. Well, people, people want what they can't have. They move towards things that move away from them and they only value what they pay for in time or money. So again, I don't know. I might need to find someone else to work with. I'm okay with that too. Or three, there's just been a lot of stuff going on. I don't need to hear about it or know about it. We hit the reset button today. We keep our goals where we're going to be at. We just call, call it quits, flush the toilet, move on, and let's hit the reset button. What do you want to do? And now I had that conversation, right? So now I can... I hope I'm answering your question a little bit. Like we said, we could spend an hour on how to build it fast, but holding people accountable is a, a very strong key too as well. And then allowing the people that want to show up to the gym, so to speak, without being accountable, that's fine too. I don't have to treat everyone like that because a lot of people just want to come in part-time. You know, not everyone hires a personal trainer when they go to the gym, <laughs> but yeah. the gym owners are more than happy to take their money every month, 
right? So if I have someone writing one policy or two policies, go, oh, God bless them, love on them, feed like, hey, they're, they're great. I mean, you know, the 80, 20 rule, 80% of my volume comes from people that write less than 12,000, $10,000 a month. So yeah, hope, hope that answers your question. Yeah, man, it does. And so obviously with that energy, that's had you transition into something bigger. So you have your agency, but you also started something cool. So the first thing I'm curious, because I know you saw your mentor do this, but like what, you know, cause a lot of people will try to do something like what you've been able to achieve uh, and fail, or they're too scared to actually like try it. So how did that whole SWAT thing get started? It's very interesting uh, I, from what I, I saw. Met, you know, it's Cody's fault. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's Cody's fault. So. Um, I started in the, every organization I built, I would do these small little events. Um, not like we're doing now just to stake them on a two and a half day workshop to teach them the necessary skills of how do I create a realization in the mind of a buyer that they need what I, what I, what I have and they'll buy whatever you're selling, whether it be your product or your opportunity, um, how to speak to people in the language that they speak. And it may sound funny when you say that, but every personality has a different way they want information delivered to them. Not everyone's attracted to what you're attracted to, whether it be a woman, whether it be food, whether it be a car, whether it be an opportunity or whether it be whatever. So most salespeople, which they always say, sales is a numbers game. Now, I don't buy that. Sales is a number game if you're not skilled, right? The beauty of insurance is it is a numbers game. I could tie a note around my dog's neck and send him into 10 homes. He'll come back with three policies, Arturo, just because he has a license and he's cute, right? right. Because that, that's a certain amount of people that want it. But wouldn't it be better if you went into 10 homes and you're able to get walk out with 12 to 15 policies because you got husband, wife, kid, whatever. So I went 12 weeks straight using the stuff my mentor taught me and wrote 100% of every person's house I went into, I came out with a policy or two or more for 12 weeks. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying to brag. I got to cheat. Remember we talked about cheating? I cheated. I knew these hacks. It's kind of like you go to, you know, you have these game hacks. Um, I knew these hacks of, I knew how to identify somebody within 30 seconds to a minute or less and be able to deliver information the way they want to hear it. So what makes this hard is I'm losing a lot of people will get on here probably hang up because I'm, I'm too hyper. I talk too fast. I'm too loud. He, he's, he's, what's he's trying to sell? Because that certain personality is turned off by that. I mean, there's certain personalities. If I actually did it, uh, this four times, one personality, it would be five minutes long. And I just give you all the detailed information you wanted to have. And I'd be very quiet and more monotone and just very matter of fact. And there would be no hypiness and there'd be no real strong emotion because that's how they want information delivered to them. Um, they don't want to have all the emotional. I, I just need hard facts about what's a lead cost. What's a percentage. If I run X amount of appointments, what can I expect? How many fall off the book? And that's sexy to them. If I can give them all that number of data and spreadsheet, that's sexy to them. Right. Whereas I could talk to somebody else and do a video. We could just be panning around my home and my car and showing Rolex watches and they're getting excited going, holy cow, you did that buying insurance. And there's another group of people that turns them off. So we did this immersive environment for, you know, two, three hours and you leave there and you're basically, I mean, again, I can't give someone a disc assessment before I try to sell them something. I can't do a Myers-Briggs and figure out which 16 personalities you are. But I can identify you based on how he taught me within 30 seconds or less of what language do you speak? So you can have the best sales guy in the world and he could be 100% closer. And if you had a room full of 100 people and you had 25 who spoke English, 25 who spoke Spanish, 25 Italian, 25 French, and you only spoke English, what's the maximum number of people he could sell for his product or opportunity? 25. Right. Even though he's the sizzler of all sizzlers, he went yeah. to Andy Elliott's training and Brad Lee, and he went to uh, Andrew, whatever, Anthony Robbins, he went ever close. Now, let's say I brought in somebody who wasn't that good. They were half as good at skill wise of getting asking for money or getting people involved in the opportunity. But I taught him Spanish, French, and Italian. And now they have to communicate to all hundred in the language they speak. They would double the amount of sales as the person that's a top closer because they don't know that skill. And so I did that internally for my team. That's why we grew at a very rapid pace. And I met Cody Ask, because I don't know if I was looking for leads. I don't know how. It's, I'm trying to still remember. I remember calling the office. I didn't talk to Cody Ask. I was like, well, he can't talk right now. But I'm like, put him on the phone. <laughs> poor, poor, poor agent. But Cody tells a story more funny. He's like, next thing I know, I have my phone. I'm like, hi, Nate. So anyway, I can't, he sold me a good 8%. I bought tickets up front. 
Uh, we became really, really good friends. Um, he's like a brother to me. We spent Fourth of July together. I love his wife, Lauren. Just amazing, amazing human beings. And if you don't know them personally, they care so much about people. Um, and Cody's just a salt of the earth, as, and Lauren is as well. And I said, hey, Cody, will you come speak at one of my events? I want you to talk about your final expense. And I think I'm going to launch final expense because all we do is mortgage protection. And Coach Burt, I met Coach Burt through Cody um, at 8% at the VIP lunch. I walked up to him and I said, I need you, I need you in my life. Because <laughs> he said the same thing. He's like, I, he's like, screw your why. I think your why finds you along the way, right? You're going to have your, your prey drive is going to get you what you want to go and you'll find your why. So Cody and, and um, Coach Burt came to speak at the event. And it was done and they stayed for the whole event. And I said, so what'd you guys think? And Cody's like, man, it was awesome. This is, man, dude, he's like, this is just incredible stuff. He goes, it's not my stuff. I'm, you know, I'm licensed to use it. And I went through so many trainings and mentored by him for over a decade. I'm pretty good at delivering the information the way he used to do it. And he's like, man, that's just, just, this is, this is great. And then coach Bert said, why are you being selfish? <laughs> I go, what are you talking about coach? He goes, why are you, why are you not sharing this with other people? And I said, well, I don't know. I'm not Anthony Robbins. I never really thought about it. Like I make my money on my insurance business. I just never thought of it. He's like, well, you really should think about it. He's like, this could, this, and he keeps now, and now Cody him tell me, I take it to the whole entire sales world instead of just because it applies with any type of sales. doesn't matter. Network marketing, credit card processing, insurance, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, same thing, different products. So it's proven, right? So we went to 8%, the next 8%, this is in between 8%. And I said, Hey, would you mind if I, I, I went to speak and I did a break. I said, well, let's do a one day event. Let's just test it out. See who's interested. And we had 85 people show up, you know, granted 10 or 15 were staff and, and Cody's uh, guys working and wives and stuff. And we did a one day event after 8%. So people stayed around on Sunday and I was like, Hey, who wants to do another one of these, like a two and a half day, you know, who's interested. And everyone's like, yeah, let's do it. And of course, you know, that's great. Everyone's interested until you ask for their wallet. Right. I said, okay. So I said, Sarah, go print up uh, some forms. I'm going to do a $250 ticket, a $500 ticket and a thousand dollar ticket. And you know, a thousand dollar ticket, we'll, we'll feed them to both days and we'll put on all the stuff. So the next day we're at my house. I go, how are we doing ticket sales? Are we gonna do an event? She goes, I think so. I go, what do you mean? She goes, we have 111 people signed up. I'm like, there's only 85 people there. She's like, yeah, people were buying tickets to bring people back with them. People are excited about this. I said, how many thousand dollar tickets do we sell? He said 33. I was like, oh, okay. So we did our first event, April, 2020. And I started doing twice a year, just too much with me. I'm, I'm back in the field building my business again, because this virtual world is just, it, it'd be silly for me not to take advantage of how many people I can help change their lives in the virtual world. Um, but just to tell you like, <sighs> motivation without education equals frustration in my <laughs> world. Motivation without, I just said this the other day, I made it up. I, I like, kind of like it though. Motivation without education equals frustration. And I'm not deeming, damning or deeming or whatever your word is, any other conferences or event, but I've been to a lot of things. I was motivated when I got in my car and I had no idea what to do with that motivation. <laughs> I didn't like, I'm, I love the fact that you're broken. Now you're rich, Arturo, but how the, did you do it? What did you do? Take me step by step. Like what did you, when I met my mentor, he taught me what he did. I first time I met my mentor, he goes, I bet you heard money doesn't grow in trees, huh, kid? I go, yeah, I heard that all the time. I was like, yeah, because I bet you never told you where it did grow, did they? No. He goes, it grows in other people's pockets. <laughs> he goes, you take that money without giving them some return, they call it stealing. If you give them a product or service, they call it capitalism. And as dumb as that sounds, the first time in my life, I really found out where money, money comes from other people. You don't need more money, you need more people. It's the only way you get it, from their wallet, from their pocket. So... <clears throat> Our last event that we did, so we spend, we bring in all the top speakers. We don't, I don't pay people to come in and that are, are celebrities. Not that that's bad, it's great, right? This is a two and a half day workshop. Like you are involved, you are in it, like in the game, so to speak. You're not on the sideline. It's funny, there's no one in the hallway. Someone just said that because uh, one of the carriers was on one of our calls and he goes, what's the difference between Nate's event as opposed to all the other events you go to? He's like, well, the first thing I realized is the energy's off the hook. Not people being crazy, just the energy in the room, because I know how to bring that energy in the room, because the more energy you get, the better speakers are. He goes, and number two is I, no one's ever in the hallway <laughs> during the sessions. <laughs> I always say that. Like, I love the people like, guys, the training's not in the hallway. I'm like, if you have to say that, your training sucks because that's why they're in the hallway. If it was good, they don't have to worry about saying don't be in the hallway because they're in interested. Like, no one's... Mo no one that watches a movie that they're interested in is murking around the popcorn stand. They're in there glued going, wait, you know, they get all their stuff beforehand because they want us to watch the movie. So we do a two and a half day workshop. So everyone we do, we, I call them trainers. We don't do breakouts. We do, you know, we do tactical workshops. 
everybody that comes is teaching strategic wealth accumulation tactics, including you when you speak, to, or you better, right? That's what I help people do. I said, don't, I don't want a keynote, Joey, or whoever, right? I'm just making up a name. I need you to teach what you do. You're making seven figures. You grew a company to $50 million a year. You focused on XYZ. Show them what you did and how you did it. So I bring all the material in for my mentor, right? And we make it ironed to uh, the insurance industry. Um, but probably 90% of it really applies to any aspect of your life or any of your business. So now we have tickets that are like 250 for general because I want someone just to be able to come in that was like me who's broke, right? Just get give me a seat. They got $500 tickets for VIP where they get a little bit better seat and they get a lunch. And then the top tier level tickets, I created a, I've been to a thousand plus events and I don't mind paying for the high dollar ticket, but I don't want to just do it because I'm sitting up front and I have stale chicken and broccoli for lunch, right? It's just not me. So when we do the high level tickets, it's an experience. Like when I go, when you go to the Super Bowl and you want VIP or you get a suite, I don't know about you, a, a, uh, Reminder Media is a sponsor of the SWAT event. They're incredible in terms of marketing, in terms of things that they do. And the owner owns a box and I'm from Philly and they invited me out. And I got to hang out and watch the, the Eagles game in the presidential box. You're treated differently when you walk in the door. You got a different entrance. There's food, there's a lounge, there's a food with uh, sushi and, and, uh, and you know, pot stickers and carving stations and all this kind of stuff. So I kind of took a look at when I go to these events and I pay high dollar tickets, I get an experience, right? If I'm going to that football game in the presidential suite, I have all sorts of things that I'm experiencing and the average person isn't that's sitting in the top row with you know, their shoes sticky from the guy who spilled beer on, on the on the step behind them, right? Um, it's a different experience. So our top level tickets, you have an experience, right? So we have a thousand dollar ticket. It's elite VIP. You're, they're fed both days. You're in a roped off area. They have a special lounge, you know, and we have like nine breaks. So you're in there and it feels like you're going to the, um, like if you're in the presidential suite, that's how we have it set up to where you walk in there, you're getting pampered. You have, you know, we rent out the Bluefish uh, sushi restaurant for one of our events. We do, uh, we have a, a mastermind at my house for the special ops. So, you know, special ops is like the, the top of the level tickets that it's, you know, $2,000 ticket, you're wine and dine. Now, here's what I'll say. I don't know about you, but I've been to a lot of events where I didn't feel like I got my money's worth. Have Ooh. you ever been to an event? You ever feel I, like I have, event? which is why my mastermind in, in Nashville is nothing like those events, those raw raw sessions where you're jumping up and down, high-fiving everybody. And again, you get back in your car and it's like, man, I feel awesome, but I'm still broken. I don't know how I'm going to fix my situation. Well, it's a two things, right? If you want to become a, a magician, and that's your lifelong goal. And David Copperfield says, I'm going to do a two and a half day workshop. And he brings all the best magicians in the world. And they spend two and a half days teaching you every trick and how they do it. Wouldn't you naturally leave freaking motivated? Yes. You'd be like, yes, that's how he made the Statue of Liberty of the Spirit. Oh my God. It's not as hard as I thought. I'm going to go practice at home. It's going to take some practice, but I can do it. oh, that's how he changes the cart. And you would learn all the behind the screen things and you'd be motivated, right? Number two is, People only pay what they have see value in, right? So here's a good, right. a good uh, source, I guess you could say. Our last event, we had 85 people buy the $2,000 ticket, right? We, we keep it small. I don't do a lot of promotion on this event. We may cut, grow it and bigger. I know people keep asking me why not. I, I like the workshop environment. I'd rather have other people learn the things I'm learning, license them out and have smaller right. workshops because it's, I like that two, 300. So it'll be like 300 people there. We, we'll sell it like 300 people. But this out of 300 people, 180 people bought a thousand dollar ticket or higher out of 300. Awesome. So last year we had 85 by the $2,000 ticket, but here's the point. When it was over, I said, we're having a training in a year. So you were there, you experienced it. You paid 2000 bucks. The training's over. We're going to do another one in a year from now. We're limiting the special ops to hundred. That's the most we can do. 79 out of 85 bought another one for the next year. <laughs> so what does that tell you? There's a few people who couldn't come back. But what's that tell you? It means obviously they got their money's worth or they're just stupid. I don't think there's 79 stupid people. So I make my event to where you're going to have an experience. That's why I'm so excited for you to see it and come to it. We're going to, I mean, you're going to love it. And not because it's Nate offer. It's just because the way it's put on, how it was taught to put on, how it was mentored to put on. And I mean, four hours goes by like 20 minutes. People yeah, can't. for sure. And I'm so, excited. I'm excited. Um, it'll be my first time coming to, to Dallas. Uh, I'm excited about the breakouts, two breakout sessions that I get to pour into some agents 
and yes. the expert uh, panelist thing where I'll get to be interviewed by Cody. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the camaraderie. I'm looking forward to connecting with you and spending some time with you and Cody and just having a, and a good old time. So um, as we kind of conclude this one, where can agents learn more about the SWAT, what it is and when the event is? Um, and you can just kind of share the dates and times if people are, are interested in it because thousands, hundreds of thousands of agents are going to see this. So um, sure. go ahead and, and, and close us in. So it's a SWAT, S-W-A-T training dot info forward slash events, SWAT training dot info forward slash events. Um, on the front page, it goes SWAT. It's not what you think. It was about a 15 minute video that it's worth watching. Talks about the what SWAT is. Um, underneath there is a video that says life changing where you have actual testimonials. And I would love you to listen to those because that really shows you. Um, and the reason it's called life changing, everyone says this is life changing, life changing, life changing. Life how, how can a two and a half day seminar be life changing? It's life changing. It's life changing. You go in and you you experience. You're in an immersive environment for over 72 hours, and you leave, and your life has changed. Whether you sell insurance or not, your life has changed. You don't see people the same way. Your relationships improve. Whether it be your spouse, your kids, your mom, your dad, you just learn things that we were never. You don't know what you don't know is always the the, the key, Arturo. Right? You don't know what you don't know. Um, so go to SWAT training.info forward slash events. And I always put this out here. I'm sure someone's going to take me up on it, but I always say, Arturo, if someone spends money to go to my event or our event or whatever you want to call it, you're in your own business. You should probably already do this, but keep your receipts, keep your, you know, whatever your dog grooming or dog sitting or your babysitter, or your, your, your trip to the 7-Eleven on the way to get your, your stuff to eat on the plane, whatever, everything you spend on that trip from the moment you leave, document it, keep your receipts until Saturday night when we're done and you don't feel like you got the value that you paid for your ticket price, come up to me or my director of operations, Sarah, or you, whoever say, man, it was really good. I, I loved it. I mean, it was cool. It was a cool spin on stuff. I pretty much knew all that stuff already. I didn't learn anything. I didn't know. And, but you know, I, I probably don't want to come back, but I, I thought it was good. I just don't feel I got my value hundred percent. I'll refund everything, every one of your expenses for going there. Cause the last thing I want to do because that'll teach me a very valuable lesson when, it, when if and when that ever happens. Because then I can go, why? What was it? Was it the staff? Was it what? And that's how you grow, right? So I'm not challenging anyone to do that. But again, I'm, I'm putting it out there because the last thing I want someone to do is to go to an event and feel like they didn't get their value. Because I've been there and it hurts, especially if you're trying to make things happen in your life and in your business and you're kind of not there yet. And you're scraping every dollar you had to get somewhere and you go and you're like, this could be it. This could change my life, man. This could be the, the one. And then you go, oh, it was good, but... Oh, I just I didn't get what I needed, right? Yeah. That I'm willing to do that for anybody who decides they want to go to it. So For sure. Well, Nate, man, I'm excited. I can't wait. June first through the third, man. I'll be there um to to support, also to learn and then to pour into to agents as well, man. And I'm looking forward to you. Thanks so much for hopping on the show. Yeah, appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. So guys, again um the link will be in the description of this video if you want to check it out it's the swat event dallas texas uh june 1st through the 3rd i'll be there cody Astons will be there they offer to be pouring into agents in a two-day immersive event and you heard it from him it is life-changing go to the link in the description and we'll see you um, next time